The mirror glass manufactory opened in Picardy in 1692, in the small village of Saint-Gobain. The site has several advantages. It is isolated enough to safeguard the manufacturing secrets. It is near the Saint-Quentin Canal for transporting the mirror glass to Paris. And there are vast forests nearby to supply the furnaces. Every day, carts filled with wood from the nearby forests are driven into the manufactory to the casting halls. Cleaning the clay consists in removing all the impurities from the clay used to make the pots and bowls in which the glass will be melted. Like most operations involving the preparation of raw materials, this work is done by women who are paid a piecework wage. The cleaned clay is placed in a large box and is inspected by the foreman. If a piece of clay is poorly cleaned, the woman's wages are docked. The pots and bowls are produced by specialized potters. The square or rectangular bowls are made in a wooden mold and their thickness is strictly controlled using a gauge. They are smaller and easier to handle than the pots since they are used to transport and pour the molten glass onto the table. The bowl capacity determines the size of the glass plate. Crushed and cleaned powdered soda ash is an essential raw material in the manufacture of glass. It is mixed with water and the mixture will become gradually more concentrated by passing through a cascade of lead basins heated with wood. When it evaporates and starts to crystallize, it is transferred into boilers where it will finish reducing. These operations take 12 hours. They foreshadow the 19th century chemical industry. It is necessary to continuously maintain high heat in the furnace to melt the raw materials for glass. Three furnace workers constantly walk around the furnace in a regular pattern, each in turn throwing two or three logs in the hearth. This is known as the dance of the furnace men. The operation is supervised by the master furnace man. The heat of the furnace is fierce, and in summer the furnace men have to be sprayed with water to cool them down. Their asymmetrical caps protect their faces somewhat from the heat. After the molten glass is transferred from the pot into a smaller bowl, the bowl is pulled out of the furnace with grappling hooks by sliding it onto a cast iron plate. The bowl is then placed on an iron trolley, which two workers push to the edge of the casting table. The glass refining process can take 36 hours and the director is the one to decide when to proceed with the delicate job of casting. Upon being removed from the furnace, the bowl is grasped by tongs to be carried above the casting table. The molten glass in the bowl is cleaned of impurities by means of a tool called a saber. The hot slag is removed with a large ladle held by a young apprentice. Heated to more than a thousand degrees, the glass is poured onto the metal table. Two workers hold the guide strips that determine the dimensions and thickness of the mirror glass plate. The glass is laminated with a roller under the supervision of two other workers who remove any remaining impurities. The glass is then pushed into an annealing kiln. Fine grinding is done to render the glass perfectly flat. This is the first finishing operation performed on the glass. 
Two glass plates are rubbed against one another while increasingly fine abrasive substances are added. This operation, repeated on both sides, takes several weeks. The inspector will ensure that the glass has become smooth to the touch. After fine grinding, the glass is flat but still opaque. Polishing is done to render the glass transparent. The glass is secured with plaster onto a workbench and rubbed with a polishing board, a soft wood board coated with putte and abrasive slurry. It consists of iron oxide, which gives it its red color. The polisher pushes the board against the glass and a flexible wooden spring brings it back to its initial position. The process takes several weeks, like fine grinding. The packing of the polished glass plates, now flat and transparent, is of paramount importance to prevent breakage and scratches. The glass is wrapped in paper and placed in wooden crates filled with straw to absorb shocks. The lids of the strong fur crates are screwed closed, not nailed, to avoid shocks. Nearly 600 people are housed in the manufactory. Day and night, all year long, shift changes are signaled by the sound of the bell. During their spare time, some workers play the favorite game of Picardy, the jeu de battoir, or paddle game, an ancestor of tennis. Deslandes, the director, views this activity favorably since it keeps the workers away from the cabaret.